today we're going to talk about a different type of soup. It's a soup that changes from day to day. It's a soup that we put into it ingredients as we go about our daily activities. And it is the chemical soup that floats around in our brains. And we're going to talk about how to make a better soup. Bear with me while I get prepared here. I don't know. Can you all hear me well, or do I need to have the microphone over here? Okay. The frontal lobe of the brain is a marvelous place. It's a place where our body creates chemicals, and it's also a place where our body is influenced by chemicals that are already present. So what we're going to talk about is the daily small choices that we make that influence what happens in our brains and then influencing what happens in our bodies. And I want to talk about joy. Joy is a very special emotion and Paul said that we should count it all joy when we go through various trials. Well, how is that possible? That is only possible when there is a special kind of soup floating around in the brain that supports the function of the frontal lobe. Okay? Right here we're going to write joy. And we're told that we are to rejoice in the Lord always. How is that possible? Well, I can tell you for some persons, their brain function cannot support rejoicing. You have to have the certain type of chemicals developing in your brain and in a plenteous supply in order to be able to support rejoicing. So we're going to talk about those emotions right now, and we're going to start at the bottom. And the first one we're going to talk about is despondency. Okay, despondency is a flat line. Maybe many of us have actually discovered that uh, we've known someone who is flatlining. That, that lives right here at the brain stem where we are in survival mode and we cannot do anything else. Perhaps a tragedy has happened the loss of a loved one or something very serious like that. Hopefully, we don't stay there very long. Our second emotion that we're going to talk about is sadness. And sadness has its home in the emotional layer of the brain the middle part. And before we get to sadness, sometimes we will have a fear. Fear of the unknown is a common one. And this one also lives in the emotional layer of the brain. And before we have a fear, oftentimes our knee-jerk reaction to a situation is going to be Anger. Anger at a situation. Anger at perhaps a person. The next one 
is our favorite, and it is joy. And it lives here. And there is one beyond that, and it's called euphoria. Euphoria is an extremely happy moment, and for some people it may be at the birth of the child or something, but this, this state, this emotion cannot be maintained over long periods of time. It also lives here. Perhaps you've known of somebody who switches between euphoria and sadness, and euphoria and sadness. They're stuck here, okay? They're stuck in the emotional layer of the brain. But the frontal lobe is a very, very special place. And, of course, we all know that that is where the Holy Spirit, where we can hear the Holy Spirit's voice. When we have a healthy, functioning frontal lobe, we can hear the Holy Spirit. We have a reasoning capability. We can reason and think things through and understand things and why people do things they do and how to help them so we can write down reasoning. The frontal lobe is where creative solutions to our problems live. Isn't that exciting? We're gonna write that one down. The frontal lobe is also where mathematics live. If you're having a great deal of difficulty with mathematics, you might want to strengthen your frontal lobe. That's also where our moral compass lives. This is where we know right from wrong, right here in the frontal lobe, okay? So we're gonna write down our moral compass. And as a bonus to joy, I'm going to write down peace and contentment. Those are all worthy goals for us, aren't they? Amen. Isn't that exciting to think about? Now, we're going to write down some of the things that cause us to get stuck here, shift, our gear shift is stuck. Our transmission won't move from this layer of emotional thinking. And so we're going to put, up here we're going to put frontal lobe. And here we're going to put the emotional layer. What causes us to get stuck here? This is very important for us to know because we don't want to be stuck there. And we won't understand how to get out of there if we don't know what causes us to be there. If we have a physical need, so we're going to write down this. Physical need. Okay, well, what would that mean? Well, that might mean dehydration. It might mean hunger. It might mean an injury. It might mean an illness. Oops. I misspelled that one, didn't I? There we go. It could also mean caffeine use. or certain prescription or non-prescription drugs. It could also mean high cortisol. Okay, now if you are having issues with these things, 
we need to get remedies for them. Some of them are temporary illnesses and that sort of thing. Some of them are choices. Um, have you ever, I mean, I can speak from a woman's perspective. Have you ever gone on a crash diet and then pretty soon your brain isn't working and pretty soon everything falls apart and pretty soon you're not on that diet anymore because you can't survive there? Because it messes with your brain. You really don't want to treat your body that way. We want to observe the eight laws of health best we can because that is a balance. There is a precious treasure in the balance of life. When we are in, in these sorts of situations, we are going to find ourselves not experiencing proper sleep usually. And proper sleep is extremely important to health. If we were to have prolonged improper sleep, we are going to be quite prone to depression. Which over time can lead to dementia. And the most scariest word, you know, for some is Alzheimer's. So can you see how our daily choices, whether to follow the health message or not, can be very powerful, very powerful on our health and our brain. Now, when we have these situations and we don't know how to get out of them, the Lord gives us people who love us, who might have information. He gives us his word. He gives us health writings from the spirit of inspiration to help us. And if you are suffering from any of these situations and you need some help, there's a couple of things that we can do. Number one, read the Bible out loud. That forces the entire brain to function in synchrony. And it starts working the frontal lobe. Okay, so, and the reason why I say the Bible is because we can get off on some fantasy things, some sci-fi stuff that really isn't healthy for our brains, okay? So we're, because they're gonna kick in emotions and we're trying to calm the emotional layer and we want to strengthen the frontal lobe. So we're gonna read aloud the Bible. Another, another thing that causes the entire brain to light up is singing hymns. All right? Another thing that causes the brain to light up is playing music. Not just listening to it, but playing it. Take up music, okay? Play music. So, without going into dietary support and stuff, which I don't want to take any more of Val's time, I wanted to get that information to you because we are in a time when we need, above all else, to have our frontal lobe functioning so we can hear the Holy Spirit, so we can notice when he's opening a door for us that we need to walk through, so we can have that peace and contentment in whatever situation we find ourselves in, that we might know with a surety that we are safe in the arms of Jesus and we have no need to fear. Amen. Thank you so much.